والله يدعو الى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء الى صراط مستقيم الذين ينفقون اموالهم في سبيل الله كمثل حبه انبتت سبع سنابل وكل في فلك Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Peace and Allah's mercy be upon you and welcome to Universal Quran. Alhamdulillah, all praise belongs to Allah alone. Wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulullah. And we ask for Allah's blessing and peace upon His Messenger and Prophet Muhammad. The Quran is Allah's revelation to all of humanity. It is the final testament of Allah's will for mankind. Revealed to the Prophet Muhammad in Arabia more than 1,400 years ago, it is the final installment in the series of revelations which Allah sent to the prophets and messengers since the time of Adam, Noah, and Abraham. Each of those previous prophets spoke to their people of their time in their language. And after that prophet passed away, another prophet would come uh, elsewhere. In fact, prophets came to every part of the world, to every race, to every clime in this earth. But the prophet Muhammad's message revealed to him through the angel Gabriel in the Holy Quran was the universal message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he is the seal of the prophets and messengers. And so there will not be after his time any further prophets or further scriptures revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For that reason, it is necessary for us to seriously examine this revelation and understand how to apply it in our circumstances. It's not enough for us to simply say that's a, a story of people of the past. But we have to apply it as if it were revealed to us today as guidance for us, no matter where we are or, or who we are, uh, we have to understand and apply the Qur'an to our lives. Now the problem is, of course, the Qur'an is revealed to a language which is foreign to many people in the world. So we have to study the Qur'an's meaning from the original language. But alhamdulillah, Allah has preserved the exact text of the Holy Qur'an in its original language. And the scholars of the Arabic language, since the ancient times, have studiously guarded and preserved the original meanings since languages have evolved over time. They've been careful that we will be directed to know the original meaning of words, not perhaps a modern meaning that some words have taken uh, for themselves. And the Prophet ﷺ left us in his guidance in the Hadith, in the collection of his sayings and deeds, a living example of how to apply the meaning of the Qur'an, as well as specific interpretation and explanation of many of the words and verses of the Holy Scripture, uh, the Qur'an. And so we have to follow the correct methodology in interpreting the Qur'an, and this methodology is based on the sciences of tafsir, or explication, interpretation, and explanation of Allah's book. Currently, we're reading from the 29th section, the next to last section of the Holy Quran. Today we're going to be reading chapter 69, Al-Haqa. And to help us with this, we have our brother Nuh Abdullah from Ghana, who is a, a memorizer and reciter of the Holy Quran, who is a student at the Al-Azhar University in Cairo, Egypt. And for the English interpretation of these verses, for our benefit, we have Tahseen, who is uh, an American student, also studying in Cairo, Egypt. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, Brother Nuh if he could read verses 1 through 10 from Al Haqqa, please. A'udhu billahi min ash shaytanir rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Al Haqqa. Mal Haqqa. وما أدراك ما الحق 
كذب الثمود وعاد بالقارعة فأما ثمود فأهلكوا بالطاغية وأما عاد فأهلكوا بريح صرصر عاتية سخرها عليهم سبع ليال وثمانية أيام حسوما وثمانية أيام حسوما فترى القوم فيها صرعا كأنهم أعجا كأنهم أعجاز نخل خاوية فأغطر لهم من باقية وجاء فرعون ومن قبله والمؤتفكات بالخاطئة فعصوا رسول ربهم فأخذهم أخذة رابية I seek refuge with Allah from Shaitan, the outcast. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. The reality. What is the reality? And what will make you know what the reality is? Thamud, Wa'ad. People denied the striking hour. As for Thamud, they were destroyed by the awful cry. And as for Ad, they were destroyed by a furious, violent wind which Allah imposed on them for seven nights and eight days in succession so that you could see men lying overthrown as if they were hollow trunks of date palms. Do you see any remnants of them? And Pharaoh and those before him and the cities overthrown committed sin and they, dis- and they disobeyed their Lord's messenger. So he punished them with a strong punishment. This verse, these verses from al Haqa begin with this one word uh, proclamation, al haqa the reality, the, one of the names of the coming day of judgment. Uh, uh, maybe a, a, a better way of explaining the meaning of the reality is the realization or actualization, the fulfillment of the promise and threat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of the end of the world that it will be realized. It won't be something theoretical, but it will be a reality. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is warning us and everybody who has heard this verse of the coming, inevitable coming of the Day of Judgment. <clears throat> For if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all-knowing, all-wise, all-just, He cannot allow that this world continue indefinitely where wrongdoers harm people and become live long prosperous lives and succeed and die and are never held accountable for their sins and evil and where innocent people and good people are harmed in this world and never find justice in their lifetime and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala must eventually bring every human being to judgment and this world will culminate in a great catastrophe, catastrophe the end of this world as we know it so it is an inevitable fulfillment of the promises and prophecies which have been delivered to all the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes? Uh, I was wondering, you know, I hear you talking about uh, eventually the world will come to an end. Mm -hmm. Uh, Do we know when that's going to happen or do we have any type of clue on, you know, because sometimes I hear in the news that people will say that the world's about to end and things like this. Yes. This is knowledge which is reserved for Allah alone. He has not revealed it to any human being, to any prophet, or even to the angels, even to the angel Gabriel, the messenger of the angels who brought the revelations to the prophets. And that is because this knowledge is not of benefit to human beings. But Muslims have to behave as if tomorrow is the end, the day of judgment, and keep it as if it's always some, somewhere near. It's always near, tomorrow or the next day. While unbelievers who reject the concept always will deal as if it were far away, no matter if, even if you told them when it was going to be, since they don't believe in it, they wouldn't change their behavior anyway. And so it's knowledge which is not of any benefit to people, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not revealed it to anybody, but it is a reality which is coming. And we have to prepare for it by choosing to act according to the revelation of Allah and obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and repent for our sins before it's too late. Because when that day comes, it's too late for anybody to change and to repent and to act uh, according to Allah's revelation. Because this is the time where we have to act, and that is the time of judgment, and then receiving our reward. There's no more 
a choice to do good or evil on the Day of Judgment. Uh, and, and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues and asks a question. And it's a rhetorical question. What is al haqa What is this reality? He's asking the unbelievers who have denied it. And what can you compare this reality to? Of course, there's nothing in our reality to compare this inevitable end of the world to. We've never seen anything like it. But Allah describes the different catastrophes that will come at the end of the Day of Judgment that we're familiar with earthquakes and tidal waves and, and, and we've seen disasters but it's something far beyond that because it's the end of our world as we know it and a new creation, a recreation of every human being brought before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for judgment. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives an example to those people who denied because the early people in Mecca, this is one of the early Meccan surahs, they denied, they did not believe in life after death. They do not believe in a coming day of judgment as many people today also don't believe in this. So Allah gave them examples of His power that He is able to punish people and destroy their whole cities because of their rejection of Allah's revelation, especially the rejection of the idea of life after death. And He gave the example of Ad and Thamud that they denied this great event, which is also called by another word, Qariya, which means the striking. And that they were, those, those were great civilizations which were known to the Arabs. Ad, whose prophet Hud came to them in the south part of Arabia, had large cities, highways linking their towns, and it was all buried in the sand. And the ruins are still found under the sand of the south part of Arabia and have been dug up by archaeologists and examined. And as for Thamud and their people, their prophet Saleh, were in the northern part of Arabia. And also they built and carved houses and temples and tombs into the side of solid rock. And so they were great civilizations far above what the Arabs <coughs> in the time of the revelation of the Quran were capable of producing. They had no civilization nearly on that level. And yet they were easily destroyed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instantaneously. And so people were found dried up and dead uh, where they lied as if they were dried up trunks of old trees that had fallen to the ground. If you've ever seen dried wood uh, palm trees or in any other kind of forest lying around scattered on the ground. And so as Allah said and asked them in, in verse 8, do you see any remnant of them? Where are their descendants? Where are the people who claim these uh, Ad and Thamud as their ancestors? They're gone. They have no ancestors, no remnant left. But they were completely wiped off of the face of the earth. And so if you doubt Allah's ability, you saw what happened in the past. And these were things that were known to the people in Arabia at that time. And Allah brought them as examples. So how could you deny the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to destroy you also if you deny his messenger, his, uh, the Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's blessing and peace be upon him. And so when we look at archaeology of the people of the past, it's not simply a curiosity or a matter of culture and civilization, but it's a warning to us if we disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what can happen. Then he goes on in verse 9 to also mention uh, Pharaoh, the, the king of Egypt, and those people before him, and the overturned cities, such as Sodom and Gomorrah. They were also people who produced a great sin, committed a great sin, which was the denial and rejection of their prophets. Each one of them had prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to them. They denied and rejected and were arrogant. Pharaoh claiming, to, of course, to be a god and was worshipped as a god, and, of course, uh, the tribe of Israel escaped across the Red Sea, escaped from Pharaoh, while uh, Pharaoh and his armies who pursued them were drowned. The water came crashing back upon them, and they were drowned in the Red Sea. And so even arrogant tyrants, the wealthiest, most powerful people, can be destroyed easily by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's not hard for him. And so when we look at these and we see that uh, these are examples but the reality is, what happened to Pharaoh, for example, isn't something that has happened to most dictators and cruel and evil people. But very often, the evil succeed and do not receive judgment in this life for their sins. But that is only part of Allah's plan, which is to allow them to commit as much sins as possible so that they will deserve their punishment all the more in the fires of hell. And so, it's actually part of Allah's blessing to the believers that sometimes we have to be patient and endure because eventually in this life we will have success or else in the hereafter we will have a higher reward 
for our patience and steadfastness while uh, those people will be crushed in this world. And if they are allowed to succeed, they will be punished all the more in the hellfire. We're going to uh, go to a break and we'll be back shortly for more Universal Quran. <laughs> Quran, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the miraculous words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah the Most High spoke the Quran. It's the thing between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Are we given the rights of the Quran? Are you ready to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the day of judgment for the Quran to take us from our hands to the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do we go through every verse in the Quran to get to know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us? Watch for the TV. Quran in depth. Welcome back to Universal Quran. We're talking about chapter 69 of the Holy Quran, Al Haqqa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is warning us of the coming destruction of the world and the day of judgment when all human beings will be held to account for their actions. And he's giving us examples, if we doubt his power, of destruction of those who have rejected his message and the message of his prophets in the past. And we're going to continue on now uh, with the uh, uh, further verses up until verse 18. Uh, and continue on this theme, if you can, please, Noah. إنا لما طغى الماء هملناكم في الجارية لنجعلها لكم تذكرة وتعيها أذن واعية فإذا نفخ في السور نفخة واحدة وحملت الأوض والجبال فدكتا دكتا واحدا فيومئذ وقعت الواقعة وانشقت السماء فهي يومئذ واهية والملك على أرجائها ويحمل عرش ربك فوقهم يومئذ ثمانية يومئذ تعرضون لا تخفى منكم خافية Thank you. <coughs> Verily, when the water rose beyond its limits, we carried you in the floating, that we might make it a remembrance for you, and the keen ear may understand it. When the trumpet will be blown with one blowing, and the earth and mountains shall be removed from their places and crushed with a single crushing. Then on that day shall the event befall, and the heaven will split asunder, for that day it will be frail and torn up. And the angels will be on its sides, and the eight angels will that day bear the throne of your Lord above them. That day shall you be brought to judgment, not a secret of you will be hidden. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is continuing with examples of his power and might that he can easily destroy and recreate this world as his will decides whenever he chooses. Uh, he gives the example that the earth was destroyed and covered with a flood to destroy the idol worshippers who rejected the prophet Noah and that the seed of mankind of humanity today was carried on that ship in Noah and his sons who were on the ark and were saved from the flood because they believed and accepted the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so anybody with intelligence with reasoning ability should take that as a warning that we cannot simply proceed in this world without being held to account but either some punishment will befall us in this world or else if we don't repent and and judge ourselves now we will be judged in the hereafter and punished on that terrible day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is warning us that real day the day of reality or the realization of his promises and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the example of 
how that is, a tremendous blast or cry or shout which will destroy everything on this world. And that will be followed up by another one, a, a thunderbolt that will strike down and destroy everything. And then there will be another one in which everybody will be resurrected. The world will be cre recreated, a new world different than this world, and everybody will be standing on the earth before Allah SWT in judgment. And Allah goes on in verse 14. The earth and mountains will be carried away from their places and crushed with a single crushing. That The stable things that you can think of, the whole earth, the mountains, the greatest, strongest objects will be crushed. They will be a, disappear immediately and be carried away like dust in the wind and will no longer have any reality. And so the world will be one flat plain where everybody, all of humanity will be gathered together in groups before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that the heaven will be torn asunder. It will have, be of no consequence. The heaven or sama in Arabic means everything above us. Not simply the atmosphere, but all of the huge objects in the great stars, the great planets, everything. All of that is called the heaven in the Arabic language. And that will be destroyed and rent asunder. It will be frail and torn up as if thin cloth <coughs> is torn up or ripped apart. And as it says in Surah an nava in verse 19, it will be opened up as if there were doors in the sky. And so there will be no longer a reality to the greatest uh, objects in this universe, they will no longer have any strength or power before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's command. And the angels will be gathered on the sides, and eight angels will be bear the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also in the tafsir, some of the scholars say that means eight rows of angels will be bearing the throne of Allah, and the other angels will be standing on the edges of what is remaining of, this, of the sky or of the heavens. Uh, after it's opened up, they will be standing on the circumference, looking at the human beings gathered for the Day of Judgment. The throne could be interpreted either as Allah's throne or as the throne of judgment which is carried down by the angels to the earth and placed on the earth as a sign of the time of judgment and Allah knows best of the meaning. Uh, there is a good uh, hadith with a good isnad in Abu Dawood, one of the collections of the Sunnah teachings and way of the Prophet <coughs> Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in which it said that between the earlobe and the shoulder of each one of the angels carrying the throne is a journey of 700 years as the birds fly. And so just between the earlobe and, uh, just, uh, and the shoulder, it gives you an idea of the tremendous idea of what an angel of the Lord is like. It's a, a terrible, frightening, awe, awe-inspiring thing to see that human beings like us have never, could not even imagine seeing such a sight. On that day you will be brought to judgment and no secret of yours will remain hidden. We have to, as uh, Omar, the second Khalifa or successor of the Prophet said, we have to uh, take account of ourselves now before account is given on the day of judgment. Judge ourselves now before Allah SWT judges us. That means to sincerely repent and to feel sorry for any sins or disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sincerely will in our hearts not to return to those sins. And if we will sincerely uh, uh, repent of our sins, Allah will wipe them out and it will not be part of our account on the day of judgment. When it says that everything will be exposed, those people who have rejected Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who worship others besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who have... Um, committed great sins and not repented and died, even as Muslims, but have died committing major sins and have not repented for those sins. Or hypocrites who appear to be sincere but actually in their hearts disbelieve. Those people's sins will be exposed to everybody and they will be humiliated by having their sins exposed, their books opened, and everything allowed will be proclaimed upon the people. But those Muslims who have sincerely repented even if they have committed sins in the past, and they ask Allah for forgiveness, Allah will take them in private and ask them about some of their sins, and they will acknowledge their sins before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then He said, Today I have forgiven you those sins, and they will disappear from their record. There will be no record in their book of those sins they committed, and then they will be handed their book in their right hand, and they will be very happy, 
and they will be happy for people to read their book because it will contain only good deeds. All the evil deeds will have been replaced with good deeds because of their sincerity. Let's read now between verses 19 through 24, please. <coughs> إن فأما من أوتي كتابه بيمينه فيقول ها أمكرأ كتابي إني ظننت أني ملاق حسابي فهو في عيشة راضية في جنة عالية قطوفها دانية كلوا واشربوا هنيئا بما أسلفتم في الأيام الخالية Thank you. Then, as for him who will be giving his record in his right hand will say, Take, read my record. Surely I did believe that I shall meet my account. So he shall be in a life well-pleasing. In a lofty paradise, the fruits and bunches whereof will be low and near at hand. Eat and drink at ease for that which you have sent on before you in days past. Thank you. So Allah SWT is saying about that person who was sincere and he said about himself uh, that I believed, I thought that I would be meeting my, uh, taking account of my actions. I would be receiving my account. The person who believed in the day of judgment, believed in the meeting of his Lord. That person who is sincere, doesn't mean he's perfect and never commits a sin, but he repented and he was sorry for his sins uh, in this life and followed up his sins by doing good deeds which wiped them away. And so on the Day of Judgment, he is greeted with good news that Allah has forgiven, him, forgiven his sins, has not exposed his sins to the public so that he will not be humiliated. So he will go away and say, I believed I would be meeting my account. Here, read my book, because he knows that his book now is full of good deeds, and so he's proud of his good deeds which have overtaken his bad deeds. Of course, we know that, as the Prophet ﷺ said, that an evil deed that you do only counts as one deed, while a good action that you, you do counts as at least 10 deeds, and it's multiplied 10 times, or 70 times, or 700 times, or more, depending on the sincerity and the, 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 the striving that you have made to perform good deeds. So any believer should be able to have their good deeds outweigh their evil deeds anyway. But just in case, we have to repent and be sorry for our evil deeds. And in fact, repentance itself is the greatest good deed that any of us can do because even repentance wipes out shirk or worshipping others besides Allah SWT, which is the, the greatest unforgivable sin. But as long as we repent of that in our lifetime before our death, then Allah SWT will forgive us and we will be resurrected among those who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. He will be given a pleasing life, a life in which he is satisfied with everything, where everything is pleasing to him, everything that he desires and love will be available to him in paradise. Inshallah, may we be among them. Uh, in verse 22, Allah describes paradise as lofty, meaning everything describing paradise is always high, while everything while everything describing hellfire is low, the palaces are high, the, the, the couches in, upon which the believers recline are high. In, in the Sahih, the authentic hadith, there are 100 different levels of paradise. The space between each is equal to the space between the heaven and the earth. So more than 100 levels. And everything is nearby, the fruits that you can eat, everything that you would want in the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will see. That's all we have time for. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide all of us to understand the Qur'an and to live it in our lives. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. وكل في فلك يسبحون